Hey there Dev Squad, Vertus here and welcome back to my Blender 3D modeling tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be taking a deeper look at the toolbar within the Blender interface. We'll be breaking it down and looking at some of the different functions that we have available to us. So like I said in the previous video, the toolbar is going to allow us access to a variety of different functions which we can use to manipulate our object, scene, play around with animation, physics, and all of that good stuff. We'll be breaking down the different tabs and explaining some of the different bits within there. What we're not going to be doing is showing you exactly what each and every button is, as that's something that you'll learn as we go through the series. What I do want to focus on, however, is giving you a solid idea of what kind of function you will find in each, and then some of the useful tips and, trips, uh, tips and tricks for using the toolbar. So, first things first, for the purpose of this video, what I'm going to be doing is grabbing the edge of my toolbar and making it nice and wide, making sure I can very clearly see it. One other little thing that you might want to know when you're working with your toolbar is sometimes you're not always going to want to have this on the screen. If you don't, the quickest way to do that is to just press T. And what that's going to do is hide that toolbar, and if you want to bring it back, just press T again. Now, with the majority of the different functions within this toolbar, all of them are accessible with little shortcuts. So you can see here, within the tools panel, as I hover over some of these functions, such as translate, rotate, and scale, you can show you, it shows you the shortcut for that. So, I can either click scale, and then scale my object up and down like that, or I can just press S on the keyboard, and then scale it as you do. So like I said, you have got the shortcuts for all of these different functions. Once you get to the point where you memorize all these shortcuts, you probably won't be using the toolbar that much. And at that point, that is where you're going to be turning it off so you have more space for your viewport. So let's start off with the main tools panel. This is going to be where you are by default, and it's going to give you access to the most popular functions you're going to be using, such as translate, rotate, and scale. Pretty straightforward, translate's just going to move it, rotate is going to rotate it, rotate it, and you've got your scale. You've also got the ability to mirror your object, and we can also duplicate our object from here, delete it, or join it to another object. Down here at the bottom, we have got our history. And with this, it's going to allow us to undo or redo some of the changes that we've made. And if you want to, you can even repeat. So have a little look through some of these, test around some of the functions, but for the most part, they are pretty self-explanatory. Moving on to the Create tab, in here, we are able to create the different kind of objects to place into our scene. Starting off at the top, we have got the ability to add in meshes, which are going to be your 3D models with geometry. So if I wanted to, I could add, let's say, a cone in here. And what that's done is it's placed it in my scene and I can now move this around using the regular transformation. If you want to get to that transformation, go back to the tools tab and from here you can scale it, make it bigger, smaller, rotate it and do all of that good stuff. Or you can just use the shortcut, which is generally a little bit easier. And like I said, over time, once you do use the software package a little bit better, you will know those shortcuts off by hand and you'll just go straight into that. In addition to static meshes, you have also got curves, uh, you've got lamps, and you've also got other kind of objects as well, which is sort of a little bit more miscellaneous. The lamps are essentially just light sources. You've got different types of lights in here and I'm gonna be dedicating a whole video to explaining each one of those. Same goes with the curves. That's gonna be something that will be going into detail a little bit later on in the series. But the Create tab overall is where you're going to be creating all of your different objects. Moving on from there, you have then got your Relations tab. You are going to be using this Relations tab mostly to create a group, to group objects together, add to the group, or remove items from the group. What you can also do is set a parent and clear the parent as well to parent these objects together. And you can also do a, little, a, little, a few other 
linked object functions in here, but we're not gonna be talking about those for this video. Moving on from there, you have got the animation tab, and this is gonna be used for making animations. You've got a couple of main functions and that's really all you need. First and foremost, you've got the ability to insert a timeline, uh, insert a keyframe, and you can put that onto your timeline or you can remove one. What you can also do here is calculate and make a motion path, and you can also bake an animation as well. But you guys will start to understand that as we move onto the animation side of Blender. Next up, we have got the physics tab. Within this physics tab, you are able to have access to functions related to physics. Now, what I'm not gonna do is try and explain some of these, so we're just gonna move straight on from here, but I do want you guys to know you have all of your physics functions in here. Lastly, you have got your grease pencil, which is going to allow you to basically draw shapes within your 3D viewport. And this, once again, is gonna be something that we'll be dedicating a whole video to. It's a really powerful tool and a tool of its own. And as such, it is going to need a little bit of detail. Hopefully now you guys have a better understanding of some of the different things that you have available to you within your toolbar. Have a little experiment around with it, create some of the different objects within the create tab, use some of the basic transformation and try get used to some of those shortcuts. But for now guys, that is everything for this video. Once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.